I had a, an interesting experience um, a few years ago. I was teaching Bible and Christian studies uh, in a school. They were a Christian school, but they were mixed enrollments. And it was maybe 60% non-Christian and 40% Christian. And I have found that the majority of a group set the tone. So if you have 60% non-Christian, then they're all going to behave a certain way. Um, so I taught Bible and Christian studies and I had tremendous opposition. I used to go into each lesson with a knot in the pit of my stomach and I thought, here we go. And, you know, I, I'd pray up and I, I'd get ready to go in there. And I said, Lord, just, just help me reach these kids. Please help me reach these kids that don't know about you. You know, because a lot of these kids, they get sent to these schools to get good morals instilled in them. Their parents maybe aren't believers or maybe they're having behavioural issues at home and the parents think that the teachers can fix them. And isn't it funny that they recognise that within Christianity there's a paradigm and there's a structure that is able to, um, able to instill morals, able to create good behaviour. So I would go into these classes and I remember every lesson was a battle. And I, I started off teaching them about, um, about creation science. Because what's happening is even with a lot of our Christian kids, they're getting the gospel, but they're not getting the science of the gospel because there is a science of the gospel. They're going to the university, suddenly they're, they're shown science, they see the, the true light of science, and they walk away from the Lord. So I thought, we've got to get creation science into these kids. They've got to understand that there are alternatives to the theory of evolution, that there is science in the Bible. And the interesting thing is I had opposition from the Christian science teacher at school who was teaching them evolution. Isn't that crazy? But I remember I battled it out and battled it out every lesson, and these kids would mock me, they would laugh at me. But you know what? The day I went to leave that school, one girl came into my office and she was the one that had given me the hardest time. She was like the ringleader. You know how there's one in every class? There's a ringleader. Well, she was the ringleader. So every lesson I made it my mission to, to take her down in love. <laughs> and she came into my office the last day and I thought, oh, what does she want? She came in, she said, Miss, I heard you're leaving. She said, I just want to thank you. And I nearly fell over. I said, thank, thank you for what? She said, thank you, because you've always told us the truth, even when we didn't want to hear it. So I encourage you, even if people, even if it seems like the lights are on no one's home, they're, they're not listening, they're resistant. Uh, one thing I admire about Alejandro, he, it doesn't matter what social cues they're giving, he keeps going. There's a guy in the airport the other day, and I'm thinking, honey, not, not connecting, it's not, he's not interested. You know, this guy was an old, crusty Aussie, um, probably from Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, he was true blue Aussie, and um, he, yeah, yeah, mate, yeah, no, 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 no. You know, and he's, I'm thinking, oh, I'll have to you know, probably we need to pack up and go home. But he kept going. And once I got through the cringe factor, I'm thinking, wow, because we do need to get through that, don't we? Yeah. And he started going, yeah, and no, I've never really thought about that before. But we've got to break that ice. We have got to. We've got to keep pushing through. Amen. Like Alejandro said, if someone is in a house and the house is on fire, you're going to run and get them. 